Welcome to Honest Whispers Experiment. On this video, I'll be experimenting with cranberry apple juice and isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Two years ago, I made a video with grape apple juice that I switched in my mouth, spit on the plate, and then poured rubbing alcohol on it to see the chemical reactions. Got a lot of comments over the years. One comment was suggesting that you get better results with cranberry juice. And more recently, I had a comment pointing out that you don't even have to swish it in your mouth to see a chemical reaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this experiment without swishing it in my mouth. As you can see, there are two bottles here. One bottle is refrigerated. I wanna show you kind of like darkness or the darker tone of the juice that's cold. And then you have the room temperature juice where it has more of a lighter color and even looks transparent compared to the refrigerated one. So, reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna see if temperature has any factor to this. So, let me go ahead and pour out the contents of the refrigerated juice. Now, it doesn't say shake well or anything like that, but let me show you the labels first. So it doesn't say shake well or anything like that, but it does look like more of the uh, juices that, I, I guess the concentrate is kind of left behind a bit. And as you can see with the rest of the labels, there's no organic labeling or non-GMO. It's a good chance that they used genetically modified fruits. And the ingredients just simply says apple juice, cranberry concentrate, citric acid, ascorbic acid. So not much on the ingredients. You can see it's kind of swirled up here. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Let me go ahead and pour the rubbing alcohol. Might be able to, I guess, visually see the chemical reactions more. Go ahead and pour this right down the middle. I don't know if that's enough. Oh. You know what? I'm seeing some chemical reaction. So it does kind of look like it's boiling, but without the bubbles. Let me use this pen as a focal point. And I poured the rubbing alcohol here, so you could see the chemical reaction, especially a lot right there. But from here, it looks like it's moving there. So all these little like swirls of the juice, you can see it's cleaner now here. Looks like the rubbing alcohol is moving towards the rest. So it's sort of like uh, finding an equilibrium balance on itself or on its own. And it does kind of remind me of like invisible worms inside, uh, kind of squirming in the juice or the liquid. And after about a couple minutes, there's no more reactions. But it did, you could see the particles much more distinctively Let me see if it does anything if I pour in more rubbing alcohol. Uh, it's definitely moving. Let me use this focal point.
Yep, no more chemical reactions. And let me dump most of the water out and then see how those how these little it's almost like little dust particles, little specks. See what it looks like without the liquid. So I poured out most of the liquid and this is what's left behind. You can see it looks it looks like colored sand. So this is probably like looking at the color probably the concentrate, the cranberry concentrate. You can see how it swirls around. Just to kind of give it a better zoom, you could see like those little particles. It looks like very fine sand. And the thing is, if the way I look at it, it kind of uh, it kind of left a little stain on the plate as well when I completely rinsed it off. So I don't know. My, I mean, if I had a microscope, this would be what I would try to look at. The possible culprit here. We don't know what's mixed in it. It could just be cranberry concentrate or it could actually be uh, arsenic as well. So anyway, let me go ahead and uh, dump this out, clean the plate, and then I'll see. I'll do the room temperature one and see if there's any differences. I wash the plate and can't really see it here, but this plate was pure white, not a single stain. And then here you could see uh, like a little bit of discoloration left behind by the juice or the mixture of juice and alcohol. So you could see kind of little like light stains. If I could point it out, it's more like there's like a ring and then there's some like little swirled lines right there. So I don't know if that's going to be permanent. So let me go ahead and try the room temperature one. And I'm going to pour out. Again, it doesn't say mix, but you know what? I'm going to shake it just so that we get a consistent consistency in the color. Of course, now we're gonna see a lot of pulp or foam. Maybe I shouldn't have mixed it. So there it is. You're not seeing chunks or anything. They're all bubbles. Okay, I'm not seeing those particles either, like we, like I did with the refrigerator one. Of course, there's only a little left, so all of the concentrate is probably more. Um, there's more of the concentrate in the leftover juice compared to one that's almost a full bottle. So here we go. Let me go ahead and pour the rubbing alcohol. I'll go ahead and do it in the middle. And right away, I'm seeing chemical reactions. Uh, it did kind of stop. And that was it, just a few seconds. Let me see if there's anything that's starting up again. Maybe if I poured a little more alcohol. So you see the reaction. It's moving up. Okay, so I guess I didn't pour enough alcohol because it's still going. It started there, it moving to the right, and it just finished up here at the edge. So you so 
we are seeing chemical reaction here without even switching it in a mouth uh, but of course what isopropyl rubbing alcohol or more commonly used is ethanol for extracting chemicals or separating chemicals so this could be just simple natural reaction uh, with the rubbing alcohol being the solvent and just extracting uh, I guess either the juice and then the the apple juice and then the cranberry concentrate I don't know if the citric acid or the ascorbic acid is going to be a factor in this of course if we experimented this with just uh, pure juice like 100% pure juice without any citric acid or, or other type of acid or additives uh, might come to a better conclusion uh, but at this point funny thing is I'm not seeing those particles with the room temperature one but at this point I don't think it's the temperature that's the factor but rather the volume of the juice and how much concentrate or or I guess yeah my guess would be the cranberry concentrate due to the colors of those little particles that we saw let me swirl this around a little bit see if there's any particles looks like there isn't uh, let me dump this out I'll do the refrigerated one one more time but I'll shake the refrigerator one and see if I could get a consistent color like this but before I dumped everything out and washed the plate I did notice there are some little particles left behind again let me see if I could use the pen as the focal point and you can see these little specks on the plate obviously not as much as the one that was I guess the refrigerator one where it was more I guess dense or had more of the concentrate in it so definitely was there or actually here you could definitely see the particles here so so temperature probably isn't a factor in this case although when you are separating chemicals or extracting chemicals i know temperature does play a part during the process where you either have to heat it up boil it or at least put it in the refrigerator to cool it down for a couple minutes you can see those little particles here as well okay let me dump the water and wash the plate okay wash the plate and dried it i'm going to do the refrigerated one one last time it's not much left here but let me swirl this or at least shake it I'm not sure it'll make any difference but i want that nice consistent color Lots of bubbles here. I'm trying to see. Uh, you do see some particles here. Let me use the pen again. I need that to get the focus going. There we go. There's a bit of swirls going on here too. See how it's creating those lines through the particles. Let me swish it this way. Okay. So let me go ahead. Pour the rubbing alcohol. I'll start from one side this time rather than the middle. Okay. 
there it goes starts immediately seeing some reaction here on the bottom And you can see the bubbles popping faster than just normal. And you can see these bubbles. Seems like the alcohol hasn't reached there yet. And little by little, you can see the bubbles here popping as well. The chemical reaction here stopped. And I'm seeing these particles kind of moving. Almost like it's being pushed now towards the right. It's still going. It's already been a few minutes. Now, again, I started from here, or I poured the rubbing alcohol here chemical reaction kind of went to the left and then sort of went backwards now and now it looks like it's done I'm seeing less and less movement I'm seeing a little bit right here at the corner but now it looks like it stopped and now it seems like it's been mixed into equilibrium or the perfect balance And it does seem like I'm seeing more particles now, or these little specks. And as I swirl it, you can see how it moves like uh, soft sand, light sand, or even color sand. Like very fine sand, like that's what it looks like. So, for me, uh, I still can't say for sure what this is, if it's just cranberry, concentrate, cranberry juice concentrate, or is this arsenic, chemicals that might have got into the fruit or the juices, whether it's from being sprayed with, ins you know, insecticide, pesticide, whatever you want to call it, or maybe it's genetically modified. So it's from the genetic, genetically modified fruit, whatever it may be. My, I guess my assumption or my guess would be uh, that it's just chemical, natural chemical reaction. Although it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any arsenic in it. Definitely probably does have arsenic in it. It's just that even if it's pure, organic, freshly squeezed, whatever you want to call it, you'll probably still get the same reaction. Again, I don't know if citric acid or any type of acid would have any factor to this as well. I guess if I could find the juice that's just pure, freshly squeezed or 100% juice and do this experiment, maybe we could narrow it down a little bit more, but... Because ethanol and isopropyl alcohol is used for chemical extraction, uh, I would assume that this is just natural reaction with the juice or whatever content you end up mixing with the alcohol. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. Until next time, please. Pray for yourself and pray for each other. Thank you.